So I'm now going to run through uh, the second task, uh, which is to uh, load up some CTD data and then try and recreate this plot. But what we're aiming to do is to create a function rather than just a simple script file so that we can very quickly plot up multiple uh, files. So there's um, instructions provided on this uh, sheet uh, which give you an indication of uh, what uh, order to do things in. Now the data that we're using is Seabird CTD data and it's possible to have a look at this data. This, this is the uh, range of data files that we have. If we right click on them and then um, open as text, uh, we can actually look at the contents of the files. And you can see that they're text files and further down they contain the actual data that we're interested in. But the uh, top of the file is made up of header information which contains information about the CTD sensor, its calibration and so on. And there are 116 uh, lines of header information before we actually get the, uh, the data. The other piece of information we need before we read the data in is which column is actually which and we can do that by looking in this header information and you can see here that the first column is the conductivity, the second column is the depth, third column salinity and the fourth column the temperature. So as I said when we were looking at um, functions really the first thing to do is to figure out well what commands are we going to uh, use to load up this information and then plot it. And then we'll start recording those commands as a script file and then the final step is to turn that script into a function. So I'll um, run a series of commands which will load up the data and then plot it and uh, then we'll uh, create the script file and then finally the function. So the first thing we need to do is to load up the data, so uh, we'll give it a name, data equals dlm read is the command to load data, then you give it the, um, the file name, uh, d1.cnv is the first data file, I'm putting the file name in single quotes, and then I'm going to tell it what the delimiter is, so this is what character separates the values, and if I look in the data file itself, you can see that there isn't actually a character there. So I just put two single quotes to indicate that there's no character separating the data files. It's just a space or white space uh, in there. And then we tell it how many rows and how many columns we're going to skip over before we import the data. So I'm going to skip over 116 rows, which was the number of header lines that we had. So I'm going to skip 116 and then I'm not interested in this conductivity column so I'm going to skip over that until we get to the, uh, the depth as the first column that we're going to load. So that's my first command. The next thing I'm going to do is to give some sensible names to the columns of data. So if I refer back here you can see that the first column I've imported is the depth the second is the salinity and the third is the temperature. So I can say it's the depth equals data colon comma one, the uh, salinity equals data colon comma two, and the temperature equals data colon comma three. I then need to um, calculate the density uh, from uh, this uh, data and we're going to use functions that we use in task 1 to do this. And so if I uh, just go back to the task 1 folder and take these two files, I can then copy them. So I right clicked and then copied and then I'm going to put them in the task2 folder which is where I'm currently working you can see that they're now here and then I can actually make use of them so I can say uh, density 
equals seawater dense zero and then in round brackets and you can see the little help comes up round brackets little help comes up and so I need to put the salinity first and then the temperature and that calculates the uh, density for me so you can see I've now got these uh, four um, sets of data which are now ready to be uh, plotted okay so at this point before I start plotting I'm going to uh, build a script file which contains these commands that I know uh, work and have loaded up the data for me uh, so I'm going to edit a new file so I can put the file name here and I'm going to call it plot uh, ctd and so I've created a new file now this is just a script file at present and so what I'm just going to do is to copy all of the um, commands that I just typed in so I'm going to shift and then uh, click and then copy so I can copy those and then I'm going to paste them into this uh, script file so I can then save that and then if I want to rerun those commands then I can uh, just um, uh, type the, the name of that script file okay so next we'll move on to plotting commands so the first thing I want to do is to create some subplots so that's a subplot and then I say how many uh, rows so it's one row it's three columns and then working on the first subplot so this is uh, the figure window that's uh, popped up and then I'm going to plot in the left hand plot the temperature I'm going to plot on the x-axis the temperature on the y-axis the depth and I'm going to make a black line which is a letter K for black um, because B is blue I'm going to use a line to join things up and a little plus symbol uh, to mark the points so if I look at my plot uh, this is what's been created it's currently upside down so I need to set GCA just set the uh, current axes um, and then the y direction to be reverse. I then want to add an x label which is temperature and uh, to get a degree symbol I use the up uh, arrow which is shift and six and then a O and then degree C and then I can add a Y label as well, which is the depth in meters. And uh, to complete this, I'll add a grid so that we've now got our, um, our plot. OK, now this creates the basic plot that we want. And so I'm going to take these commands and I'm going to copy them onto my script file. Now I've left a space here deliberately just to show well this is the bit where I'm uh, sorting my data out right? and then this is the bit where I'm doing my uh, plotting. Now I want to create two more similar subplots so I'm just going to paste two more copies of that information in before I then edit it. So the first thing I'm going to change is the subplots. So I'm going to work on the second and then the third subplot. And then the second subplot here is going to be the salinity. And then the third subplot is going to be the density. And I need to just edit the labels. So this is now uh, salinity in PSU. And this is density in kilograms per meter cubed. And again, the up symbol gives you a, a superscript. Now, if I save this and then uh, run it, um, I run it by typing plot CTD. Uh, remember that this is case sensitive, so if you capitalize things, you need to make sure you uh, 
uh, do the same capitalization and I can then look at the output of that. So you can see I've now got uh, my three subplots. Uh, they're all looking uh, about the same. Now I could probably do without these extra Y axis labels. So if I go back to my um, script file, I can just delete that line or I could just comment it out. So I could put a percent symbol in front of it and that would stop MATLAB from running it. So if you just want to make a change and then try it out and then maybe put it back in, if you just put a percent sign at the start of the line, then that enables you to do a, a quick temporary change. So I can then rerun that and go back to my plot. And you can see that I've now got a, a meter looking uh, plot. Now the final thing uh, to recreate the uh, example that I've given you for task two is to add a title above the um, uh, above the middle uh, subplot. So this is adding the title in here, which is the name of the file, which was d1.cmv. Okay, so rerunning that again. And you can see that we've now recreated uh, the plot. Now the problem is that we've got eight data files. So if I want to uh, plot up a different data file, I need to go into my script file, I need to edit this line here, and then I need to scroll down, and then I need to edit this line here. But if we take the script file and then turn it into a function, that means that if we pass the file name of the data file that we want to be plotting up in as the piece of information into the function, then uh, we don't have to edit this file any further. So to turn this into a function, we type the keyword function up at the top, it turns blue. We then give it the name of the function, which is the file name that we're using, plotctd and then we give it the piece of information that we want it to, to have and make use of, which is, and remember this is the label for that information, and so it's the file name of the data. So I can call it file name, or I could call it data file name, or whatever, just to make it clear, that is the information that I'm giving to this function. Now, currently you can see that MATLAB's telling me, well, I haven't used this information yet, and that's because I haven't finished editing the uh, the script. So to finish this, any time that I previously used the file name, I now use the label uh, to that piece of information that I'm going to be passing into the function. Now, a file name is a series of characters, and so it is contained in single quotes. But the label that we give to it isn't a string of characters, it's just a label and so you don't need the single quotes there anymore and so I replace the whole thing with that label to the information and you see that once I've done that MATLAB shows okay I've now got a place to use that information and then the second place to use that information is down here and again we put it in single quotes because a title was going to be a series of characters but we're just going to replace it with the label of that information that we're passing into the function and that's it. We've now changed our script into a function. If I save that and then run it, so I'll just close my plot. If I run it, now remember, if I run it now, it gives me an error message because I haven't given it the information that it needs to run. And it's saying not enough input arguments, i.e. you haven't told me enough for me to run properly. And if I click on here, it says, OK, I haven't given it this bit of information, and so I need to rerun it, actually uh, giving it the information that I want, which is a file name. And so in single quotes, because this is now the actual information rather than just the label to it, so it's the, the file name itself, I can put d1.cmv, and then when I run that, it plots up that data, and it labels it correctly. If I want to run the next file, I can just edit that command, and that's now the third data file. And
so on. Okay, now I tried running d4.cmv, it's giving me an error message, it says no such file or directory, and that's because I don't have a d4.cmv in my data file, I've mislaid it at the minute. So again, don't panic when you see red, uh, just read the, uh, the message that it's given you, and then try and figure out, well, what, what's actually gone wrong here. So it can't load up the data file when it tries to read it, because there isn't actually a d4.cmv in my folder. But we can run through, then d5 should work, because it's there, and that's the d5 um, data. Okay, so just to recap on uh, task two, uh, this was about uh, recreating a plot of CTD data, and the process that we went through was to first try out the different commands uh, to load up the data, and to figure out what we needed to do, we had to look at the data first. So look at the data, try out the commands to load it up, and do that in the command window, and then start a script file so that you have a record of them and then turn your script file into a function and we did that again just by adding this simple declaration up at the top telling it what information we were going to pass in and then making sure that we use that information at the relative uh, relevant points.